What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 is here. This is actually the sequel to my favorite ever iPhone accessory, aside from Apple's line of the AirPods and everything. This thing is seriously awesome, and I'm so excited to try out the new one. So let's get this thing unboxed, and we'll go out in the wild, have a fun recording day, shooting some footage with this guy, and the new iPhone 10. So a little summary for you guys, this thing is way cheaper, $130. It's better equipped to handle heavier phones, like the Plus series, it's got longer battery life. Uh, you don't need to use a weird charger for it anymore. It uses micro USB. Apparently it's better in every single way. So I'm super psyched about actually using this thing. Oh, whoops, I didn't realize that how it's there. All right, so some styrofoam here, some sort of carrying case. Oh, very nice. It comes with a carrying case now. All right, so charging cable and this guy. So it comes in this gray finish now. And it's pretty similar to the old one, actually. So as you can see, uh, pretty similar, maybe a little bit shorter, doesn't have this uh, extra additional stack here. Um, overall, it's bigger, but uh, seems like it's a little bit more compact. Uh, there is a new mechanism for clipping here. It's using uh, just tension instead of having to screw it in manually. And then you tighten it using this bolt right here. So let's see how it fits in iPhone 10 here. Very grippy. I actually had some really beautiful shots with the old one and then you lock this. So I expect this one to be the same. Uh, let's see if it comes charged at all. So power button, oh, it's dead. But the power button is here instead of the one on the right here. So ergonomically, the controls are a little bit different. So overall, it's a pretty compact, feels good. It's not as grippy to hold as the old one. They got rid of this grip pad, it's just plastic. So. Uh, see, it feels almost a little bit cheaper, honestly, on the outside, but inside it's made of magnesium now. It's a lot lighter, which is cool. Batteries built in. So I'm going to go ahead and charge this thing. We're going to go out and I get some cool footage with it, hopefully. I'm excited to see. And yes, it will handle heavier phones a lot better now, which is awesome. All right, so after spending an entire day with this guy filming, I do have some impressions. Some great, not all good. There's definitely some stuff I wish that they did not switch up from the original. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mention what I liked about this guy. First off, it charges fast and the battery life is very good. I do like that. I like how light it is. Um, there's a grip issue there as well. I like that the bottom has a mount here if you wanted to use a time lapse so you don't have to buy a separate stand for it. It's straight up there. I love that there's actually a charging port here in the back that you can charge your iPhone while filming because the battery here is more sustainable and can do that now instead of needing to be charged while filming it. Uh, so there's that. Oh, and I forget to mention, of course, you do have the option to film in a uh, 
portrait mode as well now. So this way it'll stabilize your phone. Whoa, definitely not like that. So I'm sure within the app you have to enable it, uh, but you, you get the option to do that. On the old one, you weren't really able to fold your thing down because that was in the way. So it was only landscape video. Um, yeah, so it just about ends there. It's, man, there's a lot design-wise that I don't like. I definitely don't like that they got rid of the trigger on the back. That was really quick for double tapping and stabilizing. Now that function has been replaced by double tapping this button here, but half the time, I don't even know if this thing is on. It's very confusing. Um, definitely the orientation of the buttons, I don't like as much. I just wish that they kept the trigger in the back here. I really like that one. I don't like installing the phone in here. It becomes a real hassle because half the time I do one side and the other side doesn't come out with it. So then the phone becomes lopsided. Um, on the old one, it was really stable. You just unscrewed it came out and screwed it in. And it was much simpler than this one, honestly, removing and installing the phone. So I think that was a cost saving measure that they got rid of that, don't like that. Um, it doesn't feel as solid. I mean, the grip here is awesome. You know, you just have a firm grip on this one. It's very slippery, it doesn't feel the same, but let me actually pop this thing in and turn it on for you guys. Um, so you gotta like rebalance these, reshuffle them every single time, and then you tighten it in. So turning it on is kind of confusing on its own. Uh, you gotta hold this thing for a very long time and then eventually it you know, powers on. And definitely using this thing, I noticed that it wasn't as smooth and stable as this one. I don't know if it's a weight thing because this thing is lighter, but it, it wasn't the same. It was immediately apparent filming between them and I brought this one up there just to make sure I'm not crazy. And yes, my observations were true. It just doesn't feel as refined yet. But I think with time that can change with software updates, hopefully, because this one definitely got better with time. It was not as good when it just came out. And I do have faith in DJI, so I'm hoping they do update it, make it better with time. It is smooth, I'd say. The panning is pretty smooth. It's cool that you have a dedicated zoom control now as well, so you can zoom within the app in and out. It's pretty great. So about the quality. While recording, there were several things that I did notice. The issue of the optical image stabilizer on the built-in camera fighting with the gimbal is definitely still there. And I, I don't think that's anything that DJI can fix. They certainly can mitigate it by disabling the digital stabilization within the app, which I don't know why they haven't done already. Filmic Pro, a different app, has the option Option to do that so they can make it better with that but they cannot disable the optical image stabilization so the best thing you can do if you buy one of these to reduce that shake that you're seeing in the video which is honestly pretty bad when you're moving heavily uh, is to film in 4k that way the optical image stabilizer isn't working and use the filmic pro application that way you can get some really smooth shots i definitely was not doing that uh, also i wish that dgi enabled 4k 60 within the app right now you can't do that so you're not able to get this slow motion shot that was only films using the native application for the camera on this guy. So I'd say that it's good for standing or very minimal movement shots. If you're like running or uh, in a very rocky place as I was in the forest walking, it's definitely not gonna be a smooth, nowhere near compared to like a professional version of this. But still, for some basic stuff, getting some you know amateur video, it's, it's not bad. I'd say for $130, actually very good. So this is obviously a very extreme example, but when we were sprinting up that rocky hill, you can definitely tell that the DJI Osmo Mobile 2 and the optical image stabilizer were fighting for control of which one would stabilize the video. And as a result, you get this rolling shutter look. It's pretty bad. So definitely from standing shots, it's a lot better. You get the smoothness that you need, but when you're walking, when you're moving at the same time, you definitely don't get the shot that you want. It just gets ruined by that uh, fight between the two stabilizers. And it's funny to me that the iPhone 10 still has that shutter issue to an extent. Apple definitely tried to fix it, but it is still there in some shots I got my iPhone 10 and uh, definitely don't like the flaring it does when going from dark to light. I'd say capability wise, it's 80, 75, 80% of this guy. I don't know why, I just really, really like the original. It's got that premium feel to it, it's a refinement. Hopefully this gets there eventually, but right now, you know, the softer bit just isn't there fully. Otherwise it did the job. I was able to go out filming with it, still have a lot of battery life afterwards. The battery life, I gotta clarify, is very, very good on this guy. So for all day filming, I guess, 
you do get that. So as a sequel to the original, they definitely stepped down in some ways. In others, of course, price, battery life, lightness, they did step up. The overall interface isn't as great. It's a bit confusing. It's a lot harder to learn off the get-go versus the original, but once you get used to it, I'm sure that won't be a problem. I'm just hoping that the app itself gets updated for 4K60 soon. And other than that, definitely still a thumbs up. I would recommend it, even though all of the issues with the optical image stabilization is still there. I have faith in DJI. I'm hoping that they fix the app by adding the option to disable digital stabilization. Otherwise, guys, thanks so much for watching. That is the DJI Osmo Mobile 2. I love it. Still my favorite iPhone accessory and uh, definitely something that I'll be taking with me more now that the battery life is better and the charging situation. Definitely liking that. All right, guys, thanks for watching this review. This is definitely my favorite iPhone accessory right now, especially for filming enthusiasts.